Hi everyone, welcome to Osmania Docs. Myself Dr. Vinod, Assistant Professor, Nuclear Medicine Department, in Nims Hospital. Today we have Dr. Harsha, who is a third year author resident in Nims Hospital. I will take you uh, to all the questions of selecting a author, uh, author residency in Nims. Over to you, Harsha. Hello, hello, Anna. Thank you so much for the opportunity, first of all. Uh, I have been seeing you since my uh, first year or second year in Nims Hospital. Uh, I remember you as somebody who uh, got a cult, chill bro, and we were also inspired with you. And I'm glad again that I came back to NIMS and you are an assistant professor here in NIMS. Uh, so basically, I've been in uh, NIMS for the last two years. I'm in third year now. And uh, I must say, I've been very happy with uh, uh, my residency here. The, uh, the number of, there are a huge number of cases that happen here. And uh, so oh. it's been a very good uh, decision that uh, I have been in India. So Arsha, uh, what all factors um, propelled you to take orthopedics as a branch? Uh, first of all, since my first year, since my anatomy postings and uh, dissectional postings, I have known that uh, I wanted to be a surgeon. Uh -huh. I did not know if I wanted to be a general surgeon or an orthopedic surgeon. Mm -hmm. uh, internship work, I was inclined to being a general surgeon, but then before my uh, need, I worked for an orthopedic hospital for one year okay. and I think that is where I fell in love with the orthopedic practice and uh, I felt that I had a better understanding for orthopedics and maybe that is the reason why I took uh, orthopedics. Okay, okay. so uh, since like anatomy inspired you to become a surgeon, yes, yes, yes then definitely. that one year uh, uh, after internship your work in ortho hospital, yeah. that uh, gave the love for uh, yes, orthopedics. All that is, yes. Okay, okay, very good, very good. <laughs> and second thing, uh, how many seats are there in uh, your like uh, residency? How many seats per uh, year? Per year, we have uh, nine uh, nine seats per year. Per year, okay. so there are basically nine first years, nine second years, and nine third years, okay. and nine SRs. Okay. Uh, so we have three units. Okay. Like in any other government institute uh, in South India, uh, there are three same three residents per unit. Per unit. Three first years, second years, and third years. Okay. And uh, like, uh, how, uh, what postings you get in first year, second year, and third year? Uh, basically, first year is mostly in the wards, Anna. Uh -huh. So they have uh, two night duties per week. Uh -huh. there per will week, be two, two duties. Two duties per week. Hmm. Uh, so night duty, lo uh, night duty, lo they'll come back here in our EMD, emergency building. Okay. And they'll go back to wards to, uh, the next day again. Okay. So first years are usually stuck in wards. They, they will obviously go to OTs and uh, emergency as well, but mostly they are stuck to wards and the pre-op workup of patients. Okay. Uh, in second year, we have a, a EMD posting and a post-op ward posting where one month, one okay. second year resident will be posted in EMD. The, uh, all the emergency handling. Yes. Handling all the emergencies. Through the day, 8 to 8, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., they will be handling the emergencies. Okay. Single uh, resident. Resident. The same way, there is a single resident for a post-op ward where uh, post OT cases. Whatever OTKs are there, they are, they'll be monitored in that ward. So, one month posting in post of what? One, one month, month posting in EMD. EMD. Okay. So the year, second year? Yes. Okay. Third year, there are not, not many specific postings. They'll just be in wards. They'll have a more uh, important role in operation theatres. OTs. And OPs. Most hands on, you get most hands on in third year. Mostly. Yes, mostly. Mostly third year and uh, senior residents will senior. have a good hands on. Hands on. Okay. First year is usually. Uh, Pre op work up, pre op so, yeah, work up. You will work for uh, like uh, you get everything like reports, yes, uh, all the background work, all so the that the patient gets posted in the OT. Yes, basically, they prepare the patients for operation theater. Okay. Second years are usually between this and that, they, they also work for op wards, okay. they also work in uh, OTs. Okay, in and the second years play a major role in uh, emergency OTs, basically. If they're in high OTs, yes, okay. uh, crush injuries or amputations, mm -hmm. things of that sort is done by second years. Second years, okay, okay. Uh, as there are no interns in NIMS, uh, how, how does this uh, like uh, like uh, pave your work? In, uh, uh, that is uh, uh, that causes a little hindrance, not too much, because uh, in other colleges interns give uh, treatment and medication. Yeah. But in NIMS, uh, we have uh, nursing staff. Uh -huh, they they, they do most of the work that interns do. Okay. Uh, but yeah, collecting of reports, reports and uh, yeah, yeah. clearances and all is done by first years. That oh. is a little hindrance. Okay. But that is a little extra work on first years, but uh, it does not create much of a trouble. Okay. It is, so it is manageable. It is manageable, manageable. definitely manageable. Okay. And then uh, how are the academics? Like how many presentations, classes? I think academics wise, uh, it, it has been uh, very good in NIMS is what I feel. Okay. Because we have two seminars every week. 
every week two seminars done by your students itself including uh-huh. the first year second year third year okay. we will be given specific topics we'll have to prepare uh, we'll have to present it okay. and we'll have our uh, faculty as moderators okay. then they discuss the topics whatever we have uh, uh, presented. presented so we have two of them and we also have uh, ortho radiology combination basically ortho radiology yes. uh-huh. Uh, the radiology people and all the people they combine a uh, few cases they present it every 3 weeks once in every 3 weeks okay and i think that is a very good opportunity because we also uh, learn, learn how imaging. to see x rays mris and cts okay and uh, we can see very rare cases and mm-hmm. then we have a clinical meets once in one month or twice a month where we get to see rare cases that we have seen and uh, the, uh, the way we have more, operated uh, important or rare cases rare cases okay. so that way i think academic wise the nims has been uh, very good okay. and uh, it how uh, how about thesis thesis and uh, thesis uh, usually selected in the first half or maybe first 8 months of uh, your first year you get uh, decide a topic what your thesis uh, is going to be that is mostly helped by the faculty or your seniors okay uh, they will help you we'll just have to pick a topic and uh, they push us to uh, get the necessary approvals in the first year only first 8 months to 1 year Uh, I think we we'll have to submit the protocol. protocol. Okay. Definitely uh, submit the protocol in the first year. Okay. Then get the ethics approval and budget approval in the second half, uh, second year, first, first half, half of second year. year. So that we'll get uh, get to collect cases for at least a good uh, one year. Ah. So one year we'll have to take time data to, collection to collect the data. Then you wind up. Uh, mostly in the last three or four months, we'll have to be ready with the thesis. Thesis. Okay. Okay. And uh, coming to the work culture. uh the department interactions with seniors faculty how uh, how do you feel so basically there is a thing that orthopedics might be toxic hmm. i don't uh, definitely not in nims because uh, there is too much work to be toxic at all okay because so everybody, everybody is busy everybody is too work. busy to work uh-huh. and uh, if if the work is done we all uh, plan to go home uh-huh. not stay here and fight so okay. uh, toxicity is definitely zero Okay. and faculty wise there is a lot of involvement by faculty in each and every case they are very particular case okay. this thing has to be happened to this case okay so that uh, there the is follow very, up follow up is follow very up. personal to every patient okay. and it is done by the faculty faculty also faculty so mm-hmm. their involvement is too much so there is a very less chance of uh, mistakes mm-hmm. happening in a case uh-huh. uh, miss happenings very rarely happen okay. here okay. Okay. even though the case load is very very much uh, we try because they are also involved we try to be very judicious about uh, everything what to do what not to do which which can to do which not to do yes also so, because the nims is uh, not completely government there because the they have to pay for the investigations uh, usually patients have to pay for the investigations unless it is an rgc case so we are also very particular about what investigation we are advising we don't so it is uh, so it's more uh, as it is paid out of patient's pocket so if, you uh, the judicious yes. uh, meticulous uh, meticulous work up is done we don't over investigate the patient also we don't under investigate or this required right, yes we try to do it as much as possible okay uh, compared to other uh, government medical colleges uh, what is the like uh, uh, hands on skills you acquire hands on i've heard it is less on because i have been speaking to my parallels who are doing in uh, other government institutes i think the second year resident there does uh, nailing tibias or uh, mm-hmm. nailing femurs okay uh, and the third year does platings okay plating tibias and uh, basically trauma okay. they do most of the trauma by the time they go they finish third year third year it is not the same year but uh, something i have learned from my seniors after talking to them is by the time they have done their srship srship uh, mostly both of them are on, on par with trauma definitely okay what whatever number of cases they have done in government colleges we will also be doing it by the research almost equally right. so i don't think uh, if you are expecting too much of uh, hands on in the beginning of your career i think uh, it is difficult here uh-huh. uh but you will be happy by the end of your research i think you will be confident that you will do any trauma case after you go out into hospital okay um okay. mm. uh, compared to other medical colleges uh, uh which like that that type of cases or the different equipments you have like if you compare with others what uh, do you know? so basically we get a lot of cases which means we also get a lot of uh, different uh, kind of cases uh, so we basically we deal with uh, neglected trauma mm-hmm. which is not simple trauma maybe it is operated outside and the bones do not unite so redo or, surgeries yes or it, it is infected so basically we do a lot of specialty work we do elisir of elisir of which is it's not very common outside uh, and we also do arthroscopy shoulder arthroscopy uh, knee arthroscopy uh-huh. uh, okay. and ankle arthroscopy okay uh, and we do joint replacements on knee replacement and hip replacement 
and on average how many knee replacements and hip replacements are uh, i think uh, per week we do a, at least of uh, 20 20 25 cases ha ah, 20 per week that's a of, great load yes sir knee and hip replacements and uh, arthroscopy is also almost uh, around uh, 10 to 15 cases are done here okay and uh, uh, the other specialties uh, we have here is uh, spine okay where we do uh, de- deformity corrections in spines okay. or uh, uh, pivd inter uh, intervertebral disc collapse collapse uh and spine is and one major department here we have is uh, on tumors where uh-huh. we deal with all kind of orthopedic uh, bone tumors both malignant and benign okay uh, one advantage we have here at nims is that uh, there are a lot of med- uh, departments like a uh, uh, very big radiology department nuclear medicine department uh Vas- vascular surgery department plastic surgery department because so all this hel- uh, like our supportive systems yeah. which will help you to perform higher end uh, surgeries yes definitely because we'll definitely need bone scan to know if it is a malignant or a benign tumor mm-hmm. and it is not possible to do what uh, decide on a treatment plan and we'll also uh, have tumors where uh, vessels are involved or uh, skin is involved where we might need our uh, vascular department uh, colleagues surgery. and plastic surgery colleagues to intervene we also have a surgical oncology department so, so sometimes uh, we pitch them in uh, for your when, doubts yes like a tumor margin uh, uh, okay. definitely and we also have uh, radiation oncology and medical oncology so, uh, because we'll need uh, neoadjuvant chemotherapy, chemotherapy and uh, post op chemotherapy for tumors yeah. so that way i think because we have uh, such a varied amount of departments uh, i think a lot of uh, high end cases intricate be, intricate work high end cases uh, happen here no uh, i think those intricate cases and even uh, you have a pet scan and uh, high end mris yes uh, yes so yes. all these help you to uh, st- like uh, round uh, like plan the uh, treatment especially osteosarcoma yes. if you get lung meds so you can plan plan in and out about the treatments uh, yes and also if uh, the tumor is very vascular uh, there is our radiology department where they do uh, embolization aha uh-huh. pre op Yeah, so interventions. That, yes, interventions in interventional radiology, radiology because uh, so, so that the vascularity comes down so and there is minimal bleeding in the surgery, surgery okay. uh, which will uh, help the surgery. So it's all a team work. So you are yes. in a better place, so you are better learning. Uh, definitely, because uh, a lot of people involved, a lot of departments involved. I think uh, that is why we get to see a lot of complicated cases yes. happening here, because uh, that is too big of a risk to take in a private practice or a pra- uh, de- hospital where there are no such departments. Yeah, yeah. So that is one big advantage here in. and coming to uh, like uh, uh, after passing out uh, residency like once you uh, go out in a corporate or in a own setup uh, what's the pay scale you like your seniors uh, say to you basically it is almost uh, as same as uh, surgical any surgical department right it's not very high that uh, general physician or a pediatrics would get but i think it is decent also uh, somebody who has done his uh, residency in nims i don't think he would uh, stop at uh, pgn and uh, go out to practice i think he'll most likely want to do a different fellowships or uh, mch as well because now we have uh, mch uh, in various departments like uh, spine and hand and foot and arthroplasty so mostly they uh, most of my seniors have gone to do fellowships and uh, mch but if you are going out in corbett i think you will have to join as a junior level consultant well you will probably get uh, something around 1.5 lakhs to 2 lakhs or something and uh, if you go down to a tier 2 or tier 3 tier 3 city oh, where you set up your own practice i think uh, a diff- uh, little better pay but uh, yeah. you are still a surgeon and i think uh, we'll have to establish ourselves before we can expect a very good pay so once uh, with the skills and with the patient management yes. uh, your pay scales and your practice will increase it will improve uh, that is i think is the with only all other branches it's the same with yes, all other sir. branches yeah. so how is your uh, pay structure in nims do you get uh, timely payments uh, coming to pay na i think uh, it, i think this uh, pay scale is thing i think is higher when compared to any other uh, institute in south india uh, i think in, since first year i have been getting somewhere around 90 to 1 lakh and it keeps in- increasing at least by 10% or something okay. and we get a very timely uh, timely pay because, uh, mostly on first or second of uh, every month we get, uh, get the pay so cash in hand in every year. first first day of month uh, most is our second yes, day yes yes definitely i think uh, when compared Especially to other, residency yes yes when compared compared to government college that i think this was one important factor i considered when uh, i was choosing this mm-hmm. because i wanted a uh, uh, pay uh, every month okay. so i think uh, that is one huge advantage here at nimsan 
Okay. But then, uh, how is work life balance? Yeah, coming to that, even you have a, a very good pay, I don't think you will have time to spend uh, spend on it. Okay. Also because you are all almost stuck uh, throughout the day here in first year. Definitely, I used to come at seven thirty in the morning and leave somewhere around eleven thirty to twelve mm-hmm. in the in the night. Okay. Uh, one advantage about that is that there is no traffic. You can you can uh, go in. Yes, yes. No but traffic. But I think uh, that uh, even um, orthopedics, a uh, good orthopedics like uh, orthopedics department having a good case load. More or less everywhere is it uh, like that? Uh, yes, yes, definitely. Mostly it is the same uh, same timings. Uh, but it is it is a little uh, more ex- uh, hectic in NIMS. But still, I think that is what you have to uh, compromise on because. Uh, if you want to be good at what you do, I think that is the time we have to pay. Yeah. That is that is the price we have to pay. Uh, definitely, it it, it uh, gets better when you go to second year and third year. But as a first year, you are almost uh, always stuck at hospital. You don't have uh, time to go home and come back. But it's just the first year like that. Second and third year, I think it get be- gets better. Okay, okay. Uh, nice talking to you, Harsha. Uh, thank you. Sir. Uh, thank any you message nice for you. our uh, guys? Uh, a message basically i think anna if you if anybody is planning to take ortho i think nims is a very good place to consider uh, because as i as i've told uh, a lot of exposure to case, different amount of cases i don't think you'll ever get to see it in other uh, colleges you have a high end equipment a lot of uh, collaboration with uh, various departments uh, and uh, you will also know how to work up every case uh, because in private practice it is important uh, it is more important that you work up the case properly more than you operate or treat it uh, also, because uh, NIMS is not completely government, it is semi-private. All, all, uh, although most of the cases we do here are, comes under RBC, and we also is- uh, give estimates for a CM relief fund. Uh, the workup usually, when it comes to OB basic, mostly uh, it is mostly like the patients have to pay for it. So we uh, we try very hard not to over investigate the patient because they have to pay for it. it comes uh, every penny comes up, out of their pocket. At the same time, we also don't under under workup. It uh, it is just like uh, it is all precise and only what is needed. Also, we have uh, our faculty involved in every little thing about every single patient. So there are very less chances of uh, mistakes happening, rookie mistakes happening because they are very particular. And uh, you will also learn to be particular about every case. I think uh, NIMS is a good place for that. And also, you are getting uh, a decent pay on every uh, every month. I think these are a few factors you can consider if you are planning uh, to take ortho. Don't take ortho because you did not get the uh, uh, branch you desire because you you won't like it. And NIMS can be a more hectic if you don't like ortho. But if you love ortho, I think uh, you'll be very happy with NIMS. I have been very happy with NIMS and I have zero regrets uh, taking orthopedics and NIMS despite it being uh, very hectic or uh, that the hands-on is less. Maybe they, those can be a little disadvantages, but uh, I don't think at the end of your uh, PG career you will be very happy uh, taking names. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, viewers. And uh, uh, stay tuned and like, share, and subscribe for more videos. We'll bring more content, more uh, very useful content for you all. Thank you very much.